Uh, hi everyone, uh, nice to meet you all again. Uh, we're going to take a quick look now at uh, the third component of the FutureNet model. Uh, you might have seen previous messages on our uh, product packs and our digital products on our social media platform. You may have already uh, have some experience with our advertising product. Uh, but in this presentation, we're going to focus on the third component. And this is an introduction to cryptocurrency and an introduction to our fabulous uh, live uh, open cryptocurrency. You'll find it on CoinMarketCap, and that currency is called the Futuro. So for most people, uh, they may have recollections of the word Bitcoin. They may have heard something. They're not too sure. It's the next big thing. And the blockchain and cryptocurrency uh, certainly will have an impact in all of our lives. I believe that every business on the planet is in danger of a, of a blockchain version of itself. They're, they're in danger of competition from a blockchain version of itself. And if we look at businesses like the, 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 the accommodation and travel business, you'll find that Airbnb uh, probably provides more accommodation than any uh, single hotel group in the world, but Airbnb don't own any hotels. You'll also be familiar with Uber. Uh, they don't own any taxis, but yet and all they're the biggest uh, transportation company on the planet today. And that's because they looked at an industry, they added some applications and technology to, to change it, and we're in a changing world. Everything is going digital. If you think about it, um, maybe a few years ago, your TV company told you, in three months, we're turning off analog, you must go digital. The internet has gone digital. Music used to be vinyl, then it was CD-ROM, now it's digital music. You can actually download <laughs> digital music without buying the physical disc. Uh, so you can appreciate in this digital age that the next big thing is digital money. I'm here to talk about a fabulous currency called the Futuro coin. Uh, I'll give you a brief introduction to that now, but first let me now go to uh, the, the, the blackboard or the whiteboard and share with you exactly uh, how this all came about. Now this technology called blockchain technology, um, this started about 10 years ago. Uh, back in 2008, a person by the name or a group of people by the name of Satoshi Nakamoto, sounds Japanese, but Satoshi Nakamoto uh, created, after the crisis in 2007, they created uh, a, a technology called the blockchain. Now, it's very, very simple technology, but it has a big impact on everything we do. From here on, uh, you will start to hear this word every day, probably of your life. You will uh, be using this technology maybe to vote. Uh, instead of showing up, uh, we can do our votes digitally because a blockchain is a digital ledger that actually locks in every contract and this contract cannot be broken, changed, or edited. And that means for many, many applications, it has a big impact. For instance, uh, when we go to buy a property or take a lease on a property, uh, very often the solicitor or your lawyer would need to check the deeds of that property before you would do the contract. And they go back into what's called a, a file. Uh, they would check the deeds of that property. They would find out this property was owned by X person in 1931. It was transferred to their son in 1937. The property was then sold in 1949 to this person. It was then subdivided into two lots and became this owner. And of course, the solicitor will charge you a lot of money to do this search, to do this report for you, so you are buying what's called clean title. Well, what's going to happen now using this technology is they're going to take these uh, transactions and they're going to digitalize them and put them into what's called a blockchain. And what that means is this data cannot be ever changed or altered or edited. No solicitor can go in and take a paper out of the file, alter a red line and reinsert it, uh, it, it because the, there's an element of trust and that's why we use solicitors to do these contracts. But with the blockchain, we call it the blockchain of trust because it cannot be edited. So now the solicitor will not have to do all of those searches from the beginning of time because all they need to see is the last transaction when the previous owner owned the property that you can come in and you are the next owner. Once that contract is complete, you add that to the blockchain and nobody can change it. And now that will bring down the cost of, of contracts, 
you'll be using the blockchain to vote by the same token. You can't have two votes because here there's only one you. You will be digitally uh, represented that when you place your vote on the blockchain, nobody else is going to cast that same vote. We will be using this for booking doctor's appointments. Uh, everything, I believe, will be moving towards this kind of technology. Now, already, we're, we're almost getting superseded with another technology called AI, artificial intelligence, but essentially, the blockchain is probably the biggest piece of technology that's happened in our lifetimes. Um, you will be familiar, um, well, most of you will be familiar with uh, years ago when you wanted to send a letter. Uh, you had to write out the letter and you had to um, maybe read it and go, mm, I'm not sure if I want to send that. And you rewrite it again and then you spell something wrong or, you know, so you would, you would maybe spend a day preparing a letter and then you would fold that letter, put it in an envelope. You go to the post office, you put a stamp on it. And let's say we were sending that internationally. It may take four or five days or up to 11 days in the old days for that message to get to the other side of the world. Well, what actually transformed the, that industry was email. Because now you can write it, it can auto-correct itself, it's perfectly in a straight line, all in the same font, and you press a button and it arrives like that. So can you see the effect that email had on, for instance, the postal service? It made a big impact. This technology that we're talking about now has that same big impact on almost everything that we're going to do going forward. Now, one of the first usages off the blockchain when it was created by this group or this person called Satoshi Nakamoto. Would you believe it? They haven't even made themselves known at this point. Um, they, this was born just shortly after the 2007 credit crisis and it's a fantastic technology when you kind of understand it. The first, I suppose, usage of the blockchain was uh, for a product called Bitcoin. Now Bitcoin, <clears throat> uh, many have heard of it, but let me tell you a, a brief story about it. When they designed this technology, there were 21 million Bitcoins in this technology. And in order to receive a Bitcoin, what you had to do way back in 2008 was you had to answer a question. Now, this was generally a mathematical question, so I'll give you an example. If I asked you, give me two whole numbers, when you add them together, equals the number five, what would those two whole numbers be? And you might go, well, four and one. Well, that's correct. Yes, so four plus one equals five. Uh, and as an example, because you got that question correct, this blockchain, this technology would submit or give to you a Bitcoin. That was the prize. That was uh, the result of getting this question right. But of course, there were two more answers. So let's say somebody else said six and nine. <laughs> well, that's silly. That's not right. So you would not get a Bitcoin. Let's say somebody else said two and three equals five. Correct, you get yourself a Bitcoin. And maybe the last one is five and zero. Five plus zero equals five. So there are only three answers to that question, to that algorithm. What two whole numbers when added together equal five? These are the three correct questions. So if lots of people were trying to get the answer to this, the first three that got it correct were issued a Bitcoin. So that's a very, very simple uh, explanation of how we actually get Bitcoin. The terminology used for getting these coins today is called mining. And now individuals can't do it because these questions are very complex. Uh, they use very, very difficult algorithms to, to, to work out the answers to these solutions. But if you get it correct, you do get rewarded with a Bitcoin. Today, I can tell you that 12 and a half Bitcoins are released into the world every 10 minutes. So every 10 minutes in life, there are 12 and a half Bitcoins released from this technology into circulation until all 21 million are in circulation and then it's over. Now, when I say it's over, what I mean is there's no more going to be created. Now, that's why the Bitcoin is valuable because there's only 21 million, that's called a limited supply. Let me tell you this, that if you go and check what the central banks uh, are doing, uh, if you find out what lots of the governments and the central banks are involved in, they're involved in um, producing currency, which is pound sterling, dollar, euro. For instance, in Europe, the European Central Bank is printing 80 billion dollars, 80 billion euro per month. 80 billion euros is being created per month. In the United States, 60 billion, the Federal Reserve, is printing 60 billion US dollars per month. Now, let me tell you what that sounds like. 
They're just printing money and it has no value. In fact, that's why your money is depreciating or it's actually losing value. The further into time you go, the less your, your money buys you. Um, my father told me a story that he said, you know, uh, you were born in this house, son, and uh, that house was 3,000 pounds. And I said, Dad, how could you buy a house for 3,000 pounds? I mean, that's not possible. It must have been a really bad house. He says, no, son. In the 1960s, that was the price of houses. It was 3,000. He says, in the 1970s, they were like 17 and 18,000. In the 80s, the average price of a house was 28,000 pounds. In the 90s, that moved up into the, the, the 50s and 60,000. Today, the average price of a house where I live is about 178,000 pounds. So what you can see is with that type of asset that the, 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 the value can appreciate, the value can rise. Well, what's actually happening is the money is buying you less. Because imagine your father left you a house worth 3,000 pounds back in the 1960s, or your grandfather left you a house in the 1960s. What is it worth today? It's worth a lot of money. But if he had left you 3,000 cash and left that in the bank for you, how much is 3,000 pounds of cash worth in the same time frame? You see, the cash will not buy you the house anymore. 3,000 doesn't buy a house because the value of currency goes down because they're printing more. You see, there's a cancer, and we're not told about this. There's a cancer, a money cancer, and that money cancer is called inflation. Your hard work, your labor is being eroded by inflation because if you try to save for this pension plan, by the time you get to this age, what you've been putting away will not buy you what you thought it might at this point as you save. So these guys uh, decided to create a currency with a fixed amount of supply. In other words, we can't manipulate this, we can't edit it, we can't alter it, we can't create more Bitcoin, there's a finite supply. That's why it's often referred to as digital gold. You see, money uh, used to be things like rice, fish, vegetables, water. People used to barter and exchange these natural products. This was money until gold, silver, and platinum was found in the ground. Then that became the money. At one point, those, uh, that gold, those metals, those precious metals, they were banked, and the banks issued us with a gold certificate. So if you lodged your gold in the bank, the bank manager would give you a receipt, and it said, I promise to pay the bearer on demand of this receipt the gold you've deposited in the branch. And the bank manager would sign it, and in the old days, you used to go back into the bank and say, can I have my money, please? You would present the certificate. The bank manager would have a look at it, check his signature. Yep, that's fine. And he would go and duly get you your money. And of course, what happened was people then uh, found a new way to do things. They started to pass the certificates around instead of uh, going to get the gold out of the bank. So this became the first usage of paper money where people started to pass the paper. But ladies and gentlemen, it's still only paper. It's not backed by gold because in 1971, they broke the gold standard. There's no relationship between your currency and the gold that used to back your currency. And because of that point, nobody now has any money. Up until 1971, you did have money because money was backed by gold. In 1971, President Nixon broke the gold standard and he did away with the relationship between paper and the gold. Now you're running around with paper notes. You think it's money, but it's not. You see, if you're from the United States and you come to my country and you try to buy an ice cream and you present a $20 bill, you will not get your ice cream. Do you know why? Because dollars is not money. We don't accept it here. Likewise, if you are from the United Kingdom and you go to Germany or somewhere in Europe and you try to spend pound sterling, the shops don't accept it. Why? It's not money. You see, what we have is a thing called currency. Money is gold, silver, and platinum, or this new digital age of gold, silver, and platinum, which is called the digital money because there's a finite supply. Now, the story continues because in the beginning, the value of this uh, Bitcoin, for instance, had no value. And the reason it had no value, because there was nobody using it. There was no transaction. But as history showed us, in 2010, one of these programmers was hungry. He sent a message to the network of programmers and he said, guys, can somebody out there please help me? I'm hungry, I need something to eat. If you send two pizzas to my house, yeah, and pay for it, what I will do is I will send you in return 10,000 of the Bitcoins I've managed to generate here on my computer. 
One of the other programmers looked at this message and went, okay, I have lots of Bitcoins. I don't need any more, but the guy's hungry. He sent the order to the guy's house. And what you can do with digital money is you can transfer it like email. You don't need the banks. You don't need a clearing houses. If you've got a Bitcoin wallet with Bitcoin in it, and this is another Bitcoin, this can receive it. Uh, probably takes about 10 minutes minimum to verify the transaction and you're paid in 10 minutes. So the guy, Julie, sent the 10,000 Bitcoins over to the guy that ordered the pizza. And this was the first known transaction in cryptocurrency. And from that moment on, it was like exchanging vegetables for water, milk for rice, wheat for barley. So this was the first transaction and that became a, a very momentous uh, piece of history because a Bitcoin back in those days in 2010, just a few years ago, was worth 10 cent each. And since that transaction, there has been this appetite and this desire and this interest in this amazing currency. And whilst the graph goes up and down, there, there is a trend to see that the currency has grown in value. Why? Well, when you have a limited supply and you start adding demand and interest to a product, what happens to the price? Of course, it goes up. Think about this. If you had the only computer in your city, what would that be worth if you had the only one? Everybody would want to get it from you. So the supply is limited to one and everybody wants it. So there's demand. So what is the worth of the computer? Thousands, millions, tens of millions. If you had the only car in your street, what would that car be worth? Millions. So when there's a limited supply and we start to add demand and understanding and knowledge, then everybody wants to get their hands on this coin. Now the company we're looking at uh, FutureNet started to accept Bitcoin payments back in 2015. And a Bitcoin at that stage was uh, plus or minus $250 per coin. Millions of dollars started to come to FutureNet in this uh, digital money. And they started to accumulate and acquire this massive asset at $250. Uh, at another point, uh, the Bitcoin uh, was kind of stuck on this threshold of about $600. Now, this is when I heard of Bitcoin myself. And I said to myself, <laughs> intelligent as much as I feel I am, I said, I'm not buying it. I'm going to wait till it goes to 250, then I'm getting in. But of course, guys, that never happened. And the next threshold for Bitcoin was when it sat at plus or minus $1,000. It sat there for quite a while, the value of a Bitcoin. Again, at this point, I said, okay, when it goes back to 600, I'm getting in. And you'll probably find that most people we know have some basic knowledge of cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, but how much actually have you acquired? When did you get in? And now this leads us to uh, the FutureNet story because what actually happened was FutureNet was bringing in millions of dollars at this level, millions of dollars at this level, millions of dollars at this level. And I can tell you a Bitcoin today is sitting at around plus or minus six and a half thousand dollars. Let's go back to the pizza story for one minute. Imagine the gentleman did not exchange the 10,000 Bitcoins for two pizza. He would have 10,000 times six and a half thousand each. Those pizzas today represent a $65 million transaction. Those two pizzas are the most expensive pizzas in history because had he not bought them, had he not given away those 10,000 coins, he would have $65 million today. Can you see the power of a digital asset like cryptocurrency when you understand this story? So, FutureNet bringing in thousands of dollars, creating this wealth and asset as this currency grows. Now you can see one element why we can afford our advertising products, we can afford our matrix, we can afford many elements of FutureNet is because the wealth backed up in FutureNet in digital asset is phenomenal. We've no problem giving you a 20% profit when we can get tens of thousands of percent profit. These $250 Bitcoins are worth $6,500. Can you see the wealth of FutureNet? So what we did was back in 2017, we started to create our own blockchain. We developed our own cryptocurrency and we released uh, a new cryptocurrency to the market called the Futuro. This Futuro has 100 million coins in supply. Now, it's five times the amount of Bitcoin, but what we decided to do is we emit 13.3 coins every single minute, okay? Now, the ticker tape number for, for Futuro is FTO. The ticker tape uh, icon for Bitcoin is BTC. So today, 
currently, at the time of recording, a Bitcoin emits uh, 12 and a half Bitcoins every 10 minutes. In the Futuro cryptocurrency, we emit 13.3. So it's a similar number, but we emit these every single minute. So we have what's called a one minute block. To transact with Bitcoin, it takes about 10 minutes minimum to verify a transaction. So if I send you a Bitcoin right now, it's going to land there probably in about 10 minutes minimum. It could take, you know, could, could take longer, could take two or three hours, but essentially the minimum uh, block size, the minimum transaction time is going to be about 10 minutes to transfer money. That's pretty quick. It's much faster than the banking system. But with the Futuro, we have instant transaction delivery. In other words, there's no 10 minutes. It's an instant um, delivery. Now, I can tell you that the merchants, once we launch this to the shopkeepers and to the merchants, the merchants will be very, very happy to take a currency that they can get paid immediately with rather than waiting 10 minutes to get paid. Can you imagine buying a cup of coffee and um, you, the girl asks you, would you like sugar or would you like, you know, what way would you like your coffee? Well, your coffee's cold by the time you get it because the shopkeeper has not got paid because it's going to take 10 minutes to pay them. Your coffee's cold. But with using the Futuro model, because the shopkeeper gets paid immediately, by the time they ask you, would you like sugar? They're already paid. Shops today are using um, things like Visa, MasterCard. Many of them are subject to high fees, maybe up to 5% of the, the product order. This is a big burden on, on many businesses. But more than that, sometimes they have to wait up to a month to even get those payments. Can you imagine having a monetary system where you get paid instantly, no delay? And the next good news is we have very little transaction fees. Not anything like 5%. In fact, for every transaction, we charge 0.006. So I'll just show you. 0.006 of the Futuro is what's known as a fixed transaction fee. So if I buy one cup of coffee, the transaction charge is 006 of a Futuro as a transaction charge. But if I were to buy 10 cups of coffee, the fee is the same. Or if I was to buy a brand new Mercedes Benz at 80,000, the fee is still the same, 0.006. So the fee doesn't rise as the price of the product. And these are some of the advantages of this fantastic currency that I'm about to tell you about. Now we launched this currency in February, 2018. So it's relatively new. We're only emitting 13.3 coins per minute. So there's a very limited supply. But the good news here, ladies and gentlemen, is we have a community presently in around 3 million users, 3 million members. And what we do is we educate them. For instance, this is, this is almost like financial education I'm giving here. With Bitcoin, there is no company. With Bitcoin, there is no central servers. With Bitcoin, there's no marketing. With Bitcoin, there's no education. With Bitcoin, there's no help desk. But with FutureNet, we have a community where we educate them, where we guide them, where we train them. We have a marketing arm. We have a customer support. And all of that is pressing demand on the price of our coin, I can tell you, this point of recording here in um, September 2018, our coin is already sitting at plus or minus $8 per coin. Now let's go back to this fantastic Bitcoin story. It took a year and a half before Bitcoin was valued at just 10 cent. And our currency is only released about six months and it's already sitting plus or minus $8 at time of recording. You'll find our coin in CoinMarketCap. You'll find us on many, many exchanges. You can use this coin, you can cash out an ATM, you can member to member transfer instantly. Uh, there are phenomenal uh, usages and further usages in development of our coin. The utility and use of our coin will really, really affect the value of our coin. It's incredible. Now, thinking about this, if you wanted to get into Bitcoin today, and let's say, let's say a Bitcoin is six and a half thousand dollars, right? For you to double your money with Bitcoin, a Bitcoin needs to go to $13,000, you understand? So if you bought a Bitcoin today for $6,500, for you to double your value, a Bitcoin needs to hit $13,000. But when you're working with Futuro, a Futuro only needs to go to $16 for you to double. $32 doubles again. $64 double, it doubles again. $128, it doubles again. What is the likelihood of this coin moving towards the, the area of $100 from where it is today. Based on having very few uh, coins in supply, a massive demand on the coin 
I think uh, we're going to have some exciting times. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. Uh, you must, if you need to, can consult your own financial advisor. Take what advice you can. I'm an educator. I'm teaching you about the currency. It's entirely up to you. There are risks involved because, of course, the price of coins can fluctuate and do go up and down. But let me tell you this. If you're smart, if you're intelligent, let's say you buy a coin at $8. Everybody knows if you sell it at $7, you're going to lose money. So as long as you can hold that coin to it has a higher value, let's say $10, then you make profit. So use your brains, seek advice, make the right decision and get involved in our cryptocurrency. Now that brings us to the next question. Where do you get this Futuro? Where does it come from? Well, there are a number of places you can get it. First and foremost, um, you can do it yourself on your computer. You don't need to talk to me. You don't need to speak to FutureNet. That's the first way because we have an open, transparent blockchain. It's open for the whole world to play with, okay? In fact, FutureNet don't even own the coin anymore. We prepared it. Once we released it, it's on the open blockchain. We can't change it. We can't edit it. We can't manipulate it. Why? Because the blockchain is a blockchain of trust where it cannot be changed or edited. We cannot add more coins or subtract coins. Why? Because it's already pre-programmed. So up until 2018 of February, we could do something as we prepared it. But since we launched it, it's now your coin. It's my coin. It's the coin, the global currency of the world. You can take this Futuro. You can change it to Bitcoin. You can cash out to sterling, euro, or dollars. You can bring it back to fiat currency. You can transact between members, instant payments. It's a beautiful product uh, to get your hands on and start educating yourself on the future of money, and the future of money, I believe, is digital. Like everything's gone digital, surely uh, currency and money is going digital. Um, you can go and buy yourself what's called a mining machine. Now, years ago, you could use software to do it yourself, but today you probably need to, to buy a mining machine. Um, the machine that mines our coin would mine other coins also, but uh, the, the, the machine you might want to buy is called an Antminer X11. Uh, this product might cost you about $3,000 if you wanted to buy the machine. If you're smart enough and understand how to program it, I'm going to tell you that you're going to get an electricity bill alongside that because it, it's quite a, uh, it, it consumes a lot of electricity as you're, as you're working to, to, to reveal these coins. Um, you also will uh, probably experience depreciation. So maybe in one or two years from now, the machine would be less effective. So it's a, it, it, that's your, your, your choice. There's some people who understand this in a big way. They're involved in a big way. In fact, they open warehouses full of machines to do these mines. In China now, they have uh, massive warehouses full of computers mining Bitcoin and other altcoins or alternative coins like, like the Futuro. Um, for those of you, probably like myself, who don't have that knowledge and experience, they want the easy route to get these coins, uh, there are two more options. You can, uh, you can buy directly off an exchange. So it's like going to the post office or the bank. If you wanted to go and change pound sterlings to euro or euro to dollar, you just go into the bank or you just go to an exchange at the airport or the post office. So there are cryptocurrency exchanges where you exchange your, your Bitcoin or your Ethereum or your, your cash. You, you convert that into cryptocurrency. It's just an exchange. Um, you have that option. And the, the option I want to talk about is we also can supply uh, what's called a mining package for you. Uh, and this is, this is an incredible, uh, simple way to get a uh, Futuro for the masses because if you don't understand the technology, if you don't want a fancy computer and you don't want anything uh, that, that's not easy to do, we have a very simple mechanism to put Futuro into your account. And what you would do is you would buy what's called a mining package. Now, uh, it's totally optional, but FutureNet have, um, they have seven different mining packages available. It's up to you what best suits your pocket. Um, so let me just go to the, uh, to the PowerPoint slide and show you uh, the various packages. Um, let me share a screen here. Share a screen. Should be able now to see uh, the seven different mining packages we have. So this is one option, uh, and this is what we encourage the masses to do because it's very, very simple. Let's suggest you wanted to spend $100 uh, and get some uh, cryptocurrency. Well, you just go onto our website, you buy a $100 package, and one minute later, you get your first deposit. So you buy this package for $100, and one minute later, we add Futuro to your digital wallet. So you get a digital wallet, and the coin lands there in one minute after you buy it. The next minute, you get another deposit. The next minute, you get another deposit because 
our mind mines every single minute. We put coin in your wallet every single minute from the moment you buy this package, every minute, which is 60 payments per hour, or 1,440 payments you get in a day. But tell me this, when was the last time you had an account that grew every single minute? This account grows every minute because your deposit is coming from the blockchain directly to your digital wallet and you start accumulating this coin. In fact, this product lasts for two years. It's a contract for two years. $100 gets you a reward for two years every single minute of payment. At any point on that journey, whether you wait to the end of it or right now when you get your first deposit, you can sell it or use that coin. There's no obligation to, to hold or release any amount of it. It's your money. You do what you want. Of course, if it's sitting at $8 at this time of recording, and maybe you, your exit strategy is $16, well, that's maybe the time you want to, to sell it. If you want to hold it for a bigger equation, again, that's down to you. You have your own entry and exit strategy. Now, if you bought a $250 product, well, guess what happens? You get more coin. Yeah, so every minute you're getting more coin. Why? Because you're buying more power. It's like having one computer working on, on, on the project or having two computers working on the project. So for $250, you get more. You get $500, $1,000. You can see there yourself right up to $25,000 packages. I can tell you that we've had more than one customer have bought 20 of the $25,000 packages. Why? Because they're buying more power, they're getting more coin per minute, they're building their digital asset, like building property. This is a digital asset and it's liquid. Why? Because if you need to sell this, you can go right now and sell it today. This minute you can sell it because there's an appetite to acquire the coin, so it's a liquid asset, which is incredible. Um, so that's really a, an overview of digital money, cryptocurrency and blockchain. Um, you don't have to introduce anybody. Uh, which is good because some people want to passive just to, to earn uh, currency. So if they believe in this model, uh, this is something they might like to do as part of their portfolio. Uh, if you would like to share this idea with others, well, then we have more ways of making money. In fact, we have seven more ways to earn money. For instance, if you brought us a customer, we can give you payments up to 7% of their mining package. Uh, we have career bonuses, uni-level bonuses, matching bonuses. In fact, we've car bonuses, business bonus. We need up to $10,000 a month from this company simply for building the network, for building that customer base. And you can learn more about that on one of our presentations where we actually go into each of these seven income streams if that's something you'd like to do. Help us build out the network of customers and help build the value by increasing the knowledge, by increasing the appetite for our product, by increasing the database and customer base. We reward you with commissions. And that's what this section is about. And you can learn about that on another presentation. So that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed that introduction to Futuro, digital money, and the blockchain. I hope you make best use of that uh, information. And I look forward to working with you and seeing you again in the near future. Thank you, everyone. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.